Hi, you guys. Um, good morning. Hi. So, all right. Um, today we're going to talk about. Um, you know, I haven't been on here much because um, I've been sleeping a lot, and I'm just not been feeling good. And you know, that's a normal thing for me. So, um, I would like to talk about that. Um. Knowing what your body is going through, especially after addiction, and then you have mental health issues. Um, I love experience, love sharing my experience, strengths, and hopes with people because hopefully it will help them be able to notify what's going on in their body and to be able to realize what's going on in their body. And I've been sitting here when it's this and that, and, you know, self-diagnosis when I know what it is. And um, so... Um, you know, I'm kind of freaking out right now, and, you know, I'm not using my tools. I'm sleeping a lot because I'm really weak, and, you know, um, part of it's my depression. Um, you know, um, wanting to self-medicate because to pay medicine, doctor get, pain management doctor gave me was nothing but ibuprofen, and it did not help. As a matter of fact, I'm allergic to that and the muscle relaxer he gave me. I'm not going to let that discourage me, but um, I have been sleeping like 18 hours a day. And that's not easy for someone that has major depression and that has addiction because um, it could really throw a person through a loop. I know with me, it throws me through a loop and I'm going through that loop right now. And um, it's not a very easy loop to go through. So um, I would like to share... Um, things that I plan on doing today to try to get myself out of that funk. First of all, I just had a CAT scan of my lungs. And I think this is the most scariest test that I've ever had to go through in my life. Um, and waiting on the results is just causing me a lot of anxiety, depression, um, mood swings, um, want to self-medicate, you know, I'm, it's about being honest with your, with myself and knowing what's going on with my body. Um, I'm scared and I'm terrified, but it's going to be okay. I haven't gotten the test results yet, so I'm not a psychic. I cannot predict what the test results are going to be. Okay, so um, with all that said, um, I have thought about it this morning and I was like, okay, I'm going to get my floors done and I'm going to clean my apartment because do the best I can, because usually I, I'm a, I can stay in for maybe five minutes, but, um, with me working and then my breathing all at the same time, um, it's really hard. So I, I can be up for about five minutes and, and then I'm back down again. So that'll be five minutes of sweeping one room and then five minutes of sweeping the other room. And then taking a 10 or 15 minute break and then mopping each room. You know, it, it, it's a struggle. The struggle is real. Um, so I'm not here to complain. I'm here to show someone if you are willing to listen and learn about the things that you can do to cope. Um, so I was in therapy and I um, learned a coping skill. It was a uh, I don't remember what it was called, but um, like you look at a wall and you say the wall is white. You can't argue with yourself about that. I argue with myself a lot. Let's not get into that. Um, and you can't argue. I mean, it's evident the wall is white. So that right there is just helping me get over it. And it's going to be okay. Or the wall is blue. So... I looked, that was the first thing that I saw that was the easiest thing to get me out of uh, my thoughts, triggers, things like that. So if there's a law, if there's the sky or something, I'm like, it's blue. The sky is blue. And it, that's that. The sky is blue. Other tools that I've learned is uh, I do a lot of fantasy talk. Like, you know, um, so 
my sister does know this. Um, she is aware that I do this. My psychiatrist, and my, I don't know if my doctors are. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest about something. And you can laugh because it is kind of funny. It actually is funny, but it's me getting out what I need to get out and my stressors. Whether you're arguing with somebody that's not in the room or not even there or that you haven't even talked to for 10 years or whatever. Um, I do that with my sister and, um, yeah. And, um, I, I'm trying to teach myself to stop, stop. It's not happening. It's not real. And I have to do that a lot. Um, lately I have not been catching myself doing it. Um, until yesterday I caught myself doing it and, um, I don't know. It's kind of weird. And I don't know if you understand, but, um, I argue with my, but I'll, I'll get mad at my sister and I'll block her on Facebook and I'll argue with her and she's not even here. Uh, one time I destroyed my apartment, my TV, my Wii system, my TV stand. I destroyed everything. The only thing that survived in my apartment was my coffee pot and my laptop. Literally, literally going off on my sister. But I destroyed myself and I destroyed things. I spent a week in the hospital after that. In the psych ward. Um, destroyed it. Destroyed it. I was like the Hulk. Yeah. It was crazy. And I do that a lot. So now I catch myself like idiots not real. Um, it, it's a hard thing for someone to admit. But if I want to help somebody, I have to be honest with you and be honest with myself and be honest with you. And how to cope when this happens. This is very serious stuff. Um, so this is why the, my recordings are not kid friendly. Because um, kids just don't need to hear what I'm saying. But hopefully the parent can um, tell them like, hey, use this tool or use that tool. So um, one of the tools is I just stop myself and I, the wall's white really quick, or I'll be like, stop it, Edie. it's not even happening, it's not even real. Your sister hasn't even called you to say that to you, because um, I hear her voice in my head all the time saying this and that, and I predict what she's going to say, or, and uh, that makes me feel uncomfortable talking to her and to be able to communicate with her anymore. But that's not her fault, it's just how I feel. Um, so it's very hard. Um, this is just a for instance thing. Uh, you know, I'll call her on the phone and I'm not even calling her on the phone. Um, so I catch myself like, stop it. What are you doing? So my 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 safe word to myself, and I, I, I believe that it's okay to have a safe word for yourself. Um, and as a parent, you can teach your child that. Have a safe word for yourself if something like that happens. So my safe word is stop it, Edie. Stop it. And then I calm down and I'm like, okay, it's okay. Um, and I'm in that mood today where I'm catching myself, um, sleeping a lot. 18 hours a day is, is very crucial. It's it's a lot. Um, so um, as you, some of you know, um, my COPD is in the third stage now. Um, the doctor did tell me that if I have, if you have two COPD exacerbations a year, my chances of dying are very, very high. And that's with two. I've had like 10, 10 of them between December and January. Knock on wood that my COPD is good right now. I'm not coughing. I'm cool because I'm taking the medicine. But anyway, uh, so, have your child come up with a safe word. Um, whatever safe word that they feel comfortable to catch themselves, um, you know, doing it. Also, have them look at the wall and say the wall is white or whatever color the wall is at that time. That helps me so much, like 100%, 150%, 1,000,000%. Um, that helps me so much to be able to get control of myself again uh, because sometimes I don't have that control uh, of 
myself and it's very scary when you're there when I'm there and um, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine and I understand the child going through that because I went through it as a child as well and I remember my dad asking me I was about seven or eight I'm sitting on the cellar door and I mean I, I my mom was making salad and I grabbed the half of it had less because I was sick with my kidneys at the time and um I grabbed the half a head of lettuce without my mom seeing it. My dad came out to see where I was. Uh, and he's like, Edie, did you come steal mom's half head of lettuce? And I'm out there talking to myself when I was doing it. And he's like, why are you talking to yourself? And he didn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on, you know. And I said, I'm talking to my friend, my angel. She's sitting right next to me. And um from there on, when I talk to myself, it means I'm talking to angels, leave me alone, you know. Just let me babble on. <laughs> I think that's the cutest story. But then when mom came out, and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm eating this lettuce, mom, you know. And come to find out that uh, I went back from the doctors and I was cured. And mom says, well, she did eat a half a head of lettuce. That was funny. And it's like, well, there's nothing wrong with her no more. She's cured. And so uh, the doctor said the juice is from the lettuce. Uh, I guess the nutrients or whatever is what I needed. So now I eat the heck out of lettuce. And I haven't had any trouble with my kidney since. Anyway, um, there's just things that you could teach your child to do. Uh, I lose interest in stuff a lot. Like I haven't been on my IMU game much at all. Um, I'm kind of backing off away from it because when you're on it 12 hours a day, it's a bit too much for seven years. So um, I've, I've learned to pace myself with it and uh, things like that. So, I mean, if your child is um, doing gaming or whatever, have them pace themselves. Um, don't let them get into it because that's where some of the anger comes in. Like I'm telling you the truth, a lot of the anger because they can't be level or whatever drives drives someone nuts and as a parent maybe you play those games with your child and you get agitated and whatever yeah that does not help a whole lot um it's the truth um it is the truth like the video games have them go outside and play um more often than they do um go out toss ball with them or do what we used to do as children um play softball with the kids and get involved in sports at school or, you know, when my mom and dad gave me my Atari and my little 10-inch TV for Christmas, I didn't want to go outside and play anymore. I wanted to stay in on that Atari. And, um, you know, I did. I stayed in on it. Except I caught my mom. I'd come in and go play it from playing outside and my mom be on it. Of course, I didn't bother because that was her time. So with that said, there are things that you can do with your child that is going through um, addiction, mental health, uh, especially the mental health part and the addiction because I think they both go hand in hand and it's really hard for people like me to ever cope in day-to-day -day life. Um, I go on Facebook because I have... Nobody talks to you. Nobody calls me. Nobody says, hey, what are you doing? You know, nobody invites me. I don't care. I mean, I'm glad. I've become a loner, so um, I like life better this way because it's more peaceful. Less drama. So, um, what I'm getting to is, let's see, um, another tool that I learned was um, praying. So if, you know, it doesn't matter what religion you are, if you believe in prayer, pray. Because, it, it, you know, talk to God. Talk to the Lord. And I'm not going to preach you because I'm not going to do it. Um, let's see. Um, check in on your child. Be like, hey, what's going on? You want to talk? Um, acknowledge them. Let them know that you're there for them. Um, if you see that they're being silent or very quiet, that's when you can go to them and you say, hey, what are you doing? And be funny with them. Um, that'll help 
you know, tell them jokes or pull a prank on them or something that would get them out of whatever it is that they're going through at the time because sometimes it's hard to get out of your head. Uh, it's really hard to get out of your head and I'm telling you all this today because I'm trying to get out of my head and trying to stop sleeping for 18 hours a day. But I'm in so chronic pain, which the doctors say I am in chronic pain. But yet they want to give me ibuprofen. I don't understand that. But I, what I do understand is uh, because of my major depression and my mental health issues. But my mental health issues and the pain go hand in hand, as they told me, and I could go off. I get really psychotic, so they're watching me. Um, maybe they're testing me. I don't know, but um, I'm not very happy right now. And it's keeping me agitated and tired and blah, 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 blah. But I'm not going to blame the doctors. I'm, I'm looking for my own tools to be able to cope, you know. And I've learned a lot of tools within the years to be able to cope with things like that pain or whatever. <sighs> Taking deep breaths. and That helps so much. I'm going outside and get some air. Like, I can't wait. The sun's out today. I'm so excited. And um, I'm going to go outside and sit on my steps and let the sun just beam down on me. I'm just really excited about that. I can handle the cold. Um, as a matter of fact, I have to keep my apartment a little cold, a little chilly, because um, if I get too hot, that's when I start going into the exacerbation. Or if I get too uptight or too upset, then I start going into the exacerbation. Or excited, even. Anyway, um, I just want you all to know that if I am helping someone out there, please um, heed my words because I'm telling you the truth and I'm living it myself. And then nobody to learn this from than somebody that's already living it. Um, so sometimes music really, really helps me um, cope. Um, I love music. So um, usually when I'm like this, I um, listen to dance music or upbeat music, something to get my body moving, you know. Um, let's see. Um, writing. But I don't do much writing because I have Nintendo thumb. See, I don't know if you can tell how swollen my, uh, yeah, there you go. And my thumbs are. You can tell how swollen. Yeah, you can. This one's swollen more than this one. Yeah, so I have Nintendo thumb. It's hilarious. Anyway, um, so another thing I do is, of course, I play my IMU and I uh, chat with people from all over the world. Literally, Turkey, Istanbul, Australia, um, Jamaica, yeah. And, um, so that's that's nice to do because I, when I worked in my hot dog cart, I met people from all over the world. And um, you know, it was just so cool because I got to learn uh, a word from each one, like South America or South Africa, North Africa. Um, that was just really cool. South Africa. Yeah. And of course, I forgot the words, but um, my hot dog cart was the high highlight of my life. And since I've been retired off of it, um, I, I miss that job. Something fierce. I did try to work it a couple of years ago and, uh, I got, the heat got to me and I threw up on the bus and I just couldn't cool my body down enough. And I was like, I can't do this. It was awful too, because I just really had a fun day that day with the construction workers. It was working on something in the street. I had fun with construction workers when I'm working my hot dog cart. I guess I got that type of personality. Um. 
So another thing to try to get out of your head is uh, call someone. They do have, they have, do have hotlines, um, especially the suicide hotline. Please use that if necessary. Um, you know, they have hotlines for you to talk to someone. And if you just simply need to talk, they're going to be there to listen. And they may not understand, but know that there's somebody there listening. That is the most important thing, is somebody there listening to you. They don't have to understand. They don't have to do nothing. But you have somebody there with you. And with me, all I have is my neighbor, Jen, and uh, her daughter. She brings her daughter over sometimes. I take care of her on Mondays. I take her to school in the Uber and... Uh, the Uber driver blessed us and says, well, my, my kids go to school. So now she uh, picks me and Lexi up and we take her to the school. And then um, she brings me home and she like blessed us. And, you know, people are put in your path for a reason. Um, and it's it's been great. It's been smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Anyway, so... Um, I found a home health care manager and I am getting an emergency response system when that person you put around your neck in case I fall off and I'm only 52 and you know I'm not getting any younger but I refuse to let this bring me down any further than what I already am so the best part is to know what your body is saying to you. And right now my body is saying, you need to get up. What am I going to do to get up? I'm going to get up. I'm going to wake up, have my coffee, maybe two eggs for my breakfast. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to clean my floors once and for all. And do the two plates in the silverware that I have in my and then I'm going to go get a shower and I'm going to put some clothes on today and brush my hair and that will make my day complete yeah just that simple that's what makes me happy is to be able to get up and do that stuff so that's another tool um, that you can say hey you want to help me do dishes or hey I have a project going on um, would you like to help me and nine times out of ten they'll say yeah They'll be all interested, you know. A fun project. Just say a fun project, you know. Um, just try to, uh, you know, make sure you're watching the child and or the adult, uh, per se. Um, right now, I don't have anybody watching me or making sure that I'm okay. So it's up to me to be able to do it myself and put myself in check. And it's, it's very hard to do. Uh, it, it, it's, it is hard to do. And I'll admit it, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. Because what I'm feeling, and what I'm doing, it can help somebody else out there with a child that's struggling and then when that child grows up and they still have the same issues they're going to know what to do that is the most important thing in life I'm just now learning my tools and learning more and more every day and you do keep learning more and more every day but if you don't do it now Thank you, friends.